Morning, everybody. Sunday Q&A. Here we go. A few questions this week. Hope you've all been out there. Hope you've been running. Hope you've been taking your money. Hope it's all working out for you. Had a few phone calls from people. Um, I won't, I won't again, not remember anyone's names because I don't write them down because I'm driving, you know. Uh, phone me. We had a little chat on Friday. He just started. He's just getting it through. Sent today, if that's you. Um, good luck. <laughs> he's been doing a few others. He's been doing, he said he'd done Man and Van and he'd done, oh, City Sprint or another one like that. Shipley. And... I've done another video which is going to come up. I've just I've done a few to sort of um, how it falls into its own, and it tends to be backloads. So I mean, don't get me wrong. There's some cracking jobs. It's a good way to get in with people, and it's backloads. But um, anyway, <clears throat> all in good time. In the meantime, Sunday Q and A. So um, Adrian Tomlin. Now this comes back to uh, the waiting time thing that I just posted last the last video I did before this. I think. Um, he said some some firm, one particular firm, I ain't mentioned no names, but um, he said they'll say they pay waiting time and then they don't. What you've got to do, you've got to agree it, or what I recommend you do, agree it before you click the delivered POD thing. So you go through the normal thing, collected, on site, loaded, delivered, and then you get that page that comes up where you get the signature and you take the photo of the POD. And once you click delivered POD, and it goes to create invoice, they can't change it. You have to change it at your end, which you can do. You can go to create invoice and you can change it from hundred pound or whatever you like. The problem is on their system, they'll have it down as one amount and on you change the invoice to another amount. So they'll have it on their system at hundred quid. If you change it to 120, then the accounts department, they know absolutely nothing about the job. will go, hang on a second. We're, we're supposed to be paying hundred pound. We got an invoice for 120, that's not right. Um, so what you need to do is once you've delivered it, before you click the signature and before you've clicked, you know, deli um, delivered PO, send POD, um, ring them in and say, right, okay. <clears throat> and always ring them uh, after, it's, after it looks like it's going to go wrong. If you get there and they go, oh, it's not ready, mate, or something like that, ring straight away. Because I don't know if it's because they're trying to save money or because then they can ring their customer and go, my man's on site, he can't tip. What are you going to do about it? Because you're more likely to get um, waiting time if the guy that you're working for is getting waiting time, particularly if the guy's waiting for the, his customer is desperate to get it and he rings him up and he says, well, look, I've got a man on site. We can leave it there as long as you like. It's going to cost you £50 an hour. And he says, yeah, I need it now. Then um, you're going to get £25 an hour, aren't you? Because they don't care. They want you to wait. Uh, but no, that's what I recommend. If the job goes funny, and I had a job go funny on me on Friday, but again, I think I'm going to do a video on that one, so I'll do that another day. Um... Ring them in, explain the situation. So I told you what time I got here. It's now an hour and a half later. You know, do you part, what's your position on waiting time? Um, I normally ask in fairness, I normally ask that when I ring after the first 20 minutes and they go, well, we pay this, we pay that. And then you have a little negotiation and they, you, you'll say, I want this. And they'll go, well, we'll give you this. Or they'll say, fine. Um, and they go, lovely. Um, can you change that on the system now? And if they get, they'll, they'll go, yeah, I'll run it through. And then normally you have to ring them back an hour later and go, yeah, you still haven't changed it. Um, or sometimes they do pretty quickly. Um, I have one on Wednesday morning I was dropping off all them empty milk bottles. And I got there and the guy says, um, you're early. I said, I'm not. I'm due at up past seven. If anything, it's quarter past eight. I'm late. He says, yeah, you're due up, you're up past seven on Friday. Um, <laughs> as it was, I did get in. Um, I was probably on, on waiting for about an hour and a half. They said, well, we'd normally give the first hour free. I said, okay, fine. Send me another 25 quid on the job and we're happy. Straight away. The job went from 150 to 175. Ping. Done. So that's what I recommend you do. It, regarding waiting time, to make sure you get paid. Well, ring in the second you think it's not going to go right. And then once you've finished the job, say it's all delivered. And it's also you can say it's all delivered. It's all lovely. The customer's happy. Right, now we have to negotiate the price. Have a little negotiation. Get them to change it and then create the invoice. And then the accounts department will pay it. So that's that one. Um, Maris, Della? Yeah. Useless pronouncing people's names. I do apologise, my friend. Um, how many miles do I do each week and how much do you keep? My miles a week varies from day to day. One day I might do four miles. The next day I might do 500 miles. And it really is that varied. 
you know, I might get an Oxford run, I might drive to Oxford and back again, drive around Oxford. That day I might do 120 miles delivering 10, 12 drops. The next day I might drive up to Blackpool and then from Blackpool down to Slough and then home again. How much do you get to keep? Um, I haven't really worked it out yet, which is terrible. But um, I reckon probably 65, 70% maybe by the time you take out your tax. And you're gonna get you're gonna get hit by tax if you're doing it properly and if you're working if you really want to make in fairness if you don't work so hard you don't have to pay so much tax because you only pay tax over the first ten twelve thousand pounds you work but I'm I'm aiming to get more than that I'm aiming to get big money so I work from very early to very late and take big male jobs so I'm going to get hit by some tax when this all gets sorted out um, and then of course you've got your fuel out of that. You've got your wear, tear and spares, you know, when, you, when your gearbox goes or when, you, you know, your oil and filters. I recommend everybody changes oil and filters after about 10,000 miles. Keep the engine clean, keep the, keep the gearbox running, because it's, it's your livelihood, you've got to look after these things. Um, but I reckon 65, 70%. So I aim to hit 250 a day and 250 is a minimum. Um, I am hitting it. In fact, I'm, I'm hitting more than it now because as it gets you further into it, it gets easier. I'm aiming to try to bring home round about a grand a week. That's my aim, um, and it's doable. It is doable, but you've got to put the time in. I mean, I'm often up at four, and I often don't get home until eight. But there you go. <laughs> you want the money? You've got to put the work in. There you go. Uh, right, Solomon Bashir. How long do companies take to pay invoices? Too long. <laughs> they should pay straight away. Um, it varies. And um, when you go on the CX, it will say at the bottom, pays in 30 days, pays in 45 days. A lot of them say pays in 30 days. I know two or three companies, I know two or three companies that I work for directly, they say pay 30 days. Um, I know one guy who pays next day. I know one guy who pays at the end of the week or the end of the next week, sometimes pays sooner. And I know one guy, uh, one firm that pay regularly every seven days. But that's because I've got kind of an arrangement with them. In fairness, Mark MPD, if you ever get to work with Mark MPD, he just pays at the end of next week. He's fantastic. Uh, a lot of the bigger boys, they tend to say 30 days. But be careful of this. Because sometimes it says 30 days from the end of the month. That's 60 days. Because if you do a job on the 2nd of, what are we now, June, so you should say do a job on the 2nd of June, then on the 31st of June, they'll sort their money out and you will get paid on the 31st of July. So it's 30 days. So you're actually waiting two months. Some say 45 days. There are some 60 days. I think 90 days has now been outlawed. There used to be 90 days. And everyone went, that's just ridiculous. So I don't think they're even allowed to do that anymore on exchange. But um, yeah, on the whole, I think you can be looking to get, I'd say you're looking to get your money in about six weeks. Sometimes four weeks, some, some sooner, some later. If you work on a roundabout average of that. So if you can run for six weeks, then you start to see the money coming through from them jobs. And if you keep running, it'll, it'll flow. You know, you'll get regular income. As long as you work every week, you'll get an income every week. It might be from a month and a half ago, but then the jobs you're doing now, you'll get that, you'll get that money in a month and a half. So every week it rolls on. Um, what we got here? My handwriting is rubbish. Michael Howe? There we go. Might be. Sorry, my hand ran. Um, is there an exchange for car transporting? I don't know. Not that I know of. I don't think there is. There are jobs that come up on the courier exchange for car transportation. Um, there's one we've been thinking about. We've, we've been thinking about maybe trying to work out a network for a chain, you know, um, transporting bikes. Because there's probably a load of people out there that might buy a, buy a vintage scooter. Like my father-in-law's over there. That is a Vespa Sportif. 19th. I'm going to get him to do a video about it one day. One of the guys said do a video. One, I think it's CJ. I don't know, mate. If it wasn't, I don't know, mate, anyway. Um, turned around and said, get a video on that. And I said to my father-in-law, um, we've got to do that one day, but I want him to do it because he can talk you through it properly because it's his baby, really, you know. Um, but, yeah, I thought there must be people who want their scooters or their bike breaks down or they need to get it back from the mechanics or they just want to take it for a service. I once had to ship that from here to Watford to take it for a service and then ship it back again because he couldn't drive it, but he wanted to get his service just in case he could. Um, and, well, I just done that for him, you know, because he's my he's, he's father-in-law. Um, but, yeah, so we might look into see if we can get jobs transporting bikes because tra you can transport bikes in the back of a van. Um, as for car transportation, if you've got, you know, a truck and a trailer... I would probably suggest the best thing to do is to go around places like um, body shops and particularly people who do vintage cars. There's a firm at the top of the business park called Smart Touch. 
and he, he they've probably got the only problem is they might have their own one but just put some cards out you know just go to, I would go Thompson's and I would target these people and go if you need a car transport and I'm your man you are going to run back empty but chances are you know what's the odds of getting a car transported up to Liverpool and then a car back from Liverpool to London like you know but um, having said that you can probably charge them the right money to start with and particularly if people are dealing with vintage cars, these people pay serious dough. Him at the top of the road, he said he'd done up one of these old Mercedes. And it, he said, um, it was one of the guys I was talking to who works for him. And he said, like, this car, when we finished it, it was like an old 1930s. It was like pristine. It looked like it had just come off the production line. It charged him over 100 grand. But if you can afford one of these original Mercedes, you don't care. You've got that much dough. So you will pay to have your car safely transported big money. So that's something to think about, you know. Not something I'm thinking about, but something you can think about. Uh, what else have we got here? Oh, yes. Uh, Michael Ogden, Bumblebee Careers, has also got a channel out on YouTube. Um, I guess you type in Michael Ogden, which is O-G-D-U-N. Um, it's kind of like what I do, but it's a little bit more ca cartoony. He's got one of them things where you put the glasses on and, you know, and, and the voice goes up. And it's quicker. So if you want the, you know, if you want the shorter version, there's lots of little, you know, you might want to give him a bash and see how he's getting on out there, you know. So he wrote me a little chat, and um, yeah. But other than that, that's about it this week. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of it. So I'm going to say goodbye now, and hope that you're all well, and wish you all the best and best and lots of miles and lots of wonderful easy jobs in the up and coming week. And like we say, take care, take money.